No, wait, wait. No, 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 go back, go back. Now, they were having a luncheon. Getting ready to go to lunch. Okay, so they had to wash their hands and, and face. Mm -hmm. Right. And this, but this was the Booker T school. What school was this? La, uh, mm. In Norfolk? What was yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. But this was. East, at Eastern. But this was a mixed school, mixed white and black, or was it just. Uh -huh. It was mixed. Highly mixed. When you say highly mixed, what does that mean? All kind of races and stuff. Because a lot of the children uh, were, uh, I call them military brats. Mm. Their daddies and mamas were in military. And also, a lot of them had, were deployed. Mm -hmm. That's where the room mothers and fathers were, were instrumental, stepped up to the plate. So the children would not feel that they didn't have any parents. Okay. So, okay, so 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 now what happened? So you told that the, you told everybody had to wash their hands. And f how did that happen? Uh, they, they had to do that before going to the cafeteria to eat. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when he told me I had not washed my face today, <laughs> or I had not fit and washed my entire face, but I never understood where the entire face came from, unless he was just talking about my eyes. I guess my eyes. Look, must have looked clean to him or something. The girl who, I had a student teacher in there, mm. and she came to me, she says, Joe, you know that child doesn't know that you are black. I said, you think so? She said, what else would he have said that, that you had now washed your face? Okay, so this is a white, what, what, what kind of, what, what was he? Just a white, straight white child, where's he from? White child, right, right around the corner from the school. Okay, so so when everybody, all the children wash their hands and face, then you, how did you wash your hands? Uh huh. I mean, did you? They see you do that? I don't understand. How did this? He asked me. Everybody had washed their hands and passed the check. He was a little checker. <laughs> and somebody suggested you forgot Mama do Mama Bagby. I said, I'll do. I'll wash my hands too. And that's when I was drying my hands. That he looked up at me and said, if I had forgotten something, I had not washed my face. Mm. Didn't see any part of my body. He just saw my face. Mm. And that day, he brought the hands into it. Uh, Anthony's daddy was sitting up at the, up there on the step stool. And he said, do you know what? If I had had the intellect to think, I would have bought my motion picture camera here. He said, but what you experienced right a minute, minute ago, many people will have never had the innocence of a child to explain that he did not see color. I said, you think so? He said, I know so. He said, because it also depends on the conversations that they have home, at home. Got a new teacher. What is she? Or what is he? He said, that's a common question that you may ask, they may ask in some homes. He said, but I refuse to let it be asked in, in our home. Because I want them to know they are being special. They have a special teacher. And this special teacher does this. And this special teacher does anything. He said that they wanted to give her, them a, her name. The word would have been Mrs. Special. <laughs> so I told Anthony's daddy, I said, you're a good father. But he wasn't even the room father. His wife was the room mother. But whatever she did for the children or for me, he duplicated it. Okay, hold on a second. Yeah, I, I got all that stuff. Yeah, you had a teacher's assistant, right? Then you had these checkers. The kids would be, somebody had to be a checker to check that everybody washed their hands and face, uh -huh. had the nails clean or whatever, right? What's this room mother or room father? What's that? I never heard of that. 
they were people who were sick. If the children were going on a trip or something. Oh, okay, okay. They had to have some adults right. yeah. on that bus with them. Mm-mm. Not only on the bus, when those children came to school and they were going home on the bus, uh, a, one of the teachers in that group would have to ride the bus with the children and the bus driver and the bus driver's assistant. Yeah, the bus driver and assistant. So, because, you know, a lot of times you see like a motion picture or something like that. And you have these, the bus, you know, kids in the bus and everybody's jumping up, throwing, you know, throwing yes, paper airplanes. that's or right. But do you, that didn't happen in your... No living. They got on that bus and said, good evening. Get with the latest bus, bus driver would be named. If her name was Jones. Thank you, Miss. No. Good evening, Mrs. Jones. Good evening. Good evening, Mrs. Jones. Good evening. Good evening, Mrs. Jones. Good evening. Every child who gets on the bus had to say, good evening, Mrs. Jones. But they just couldn't get off the bus and say bye. Mm. Thank you, Mrs. Jones. Thank you, Mrs. Jones. (laughs) One day the bus driver said to me, do you do this all the time with your children? I said, do what? Teach them all these little thank you and good evening and everything. I said, that's part of my, what we do, our communications skills. Mm -hmm. She said, how long you been teaching? I told her, she said. Well, how long were you teaching at that time? At that time, I had been teaching about, maybe about, 15 years, so 15 or 16 years. And this was your main school? This was the only school that you taught in? It was the last uh, of the two elementary schools that I worked in. Mm -hmm. Basically, I was with kindergarten through seventh grade. Mm -hmm. But basically, it was at the primary level that I taught, had more experience in working with them. Mm. But you see, when I was on that, if I was going to be the person riding the bus with the children, at the end of the line, there would be another teacher from the school Mm -hmm. with the principal or somebody else to give them, give me a ride home back to school. Mm -hmm. And I had to give a report. This is, I I never heard anything like this. She said to me, I know the principal said to me, I don't know why I waste my time to ask you how how was the trip for the children coming home. Because I know what you're going to say. Mm. My babies, she said, she said, I got to hear the story about the babies. I said, well, they, they are my babies. They're with me more of the waking hours mm. than they are with their natural, their natural mamas and daddies. It's kind of interesting because in, in, in uh, it's, uh, just the term babies, because in South Africa, I work with, uh, with communities. Uh, we do this initiative. Well, my, my, if you want to call him my, my, my guy that, that, that really works with them. Uh, you know, he's in his uh, um, 20s, late, late 20s, I think, uh-huh. right? like that. But he always refers to, you know, the, the children as the babies. We have to take care of the babies. This is this is his term. I haven't really heard a lot of other people. So you're the first person to tell you the truth. You're the first person other than him <laughs> that that refers to, you know, I want to say your charge, but you know, people that you're responsible for as your babies. It's very interesting to me that you know just, he's in South Africa. You're here <laughs> in, in, in in South Virginia if you want. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of interesting that that term. How did, anyway, back to the point. It started back when I was in the fourth grade. You know, I told you the teacher, uh, Mrs. Bunch, that wanted to take me to Florida, uh, Mexico. Your fourth fourth grade teacher. Uh So you were about nine years old. Mm. Okay, what happened? She referred to us as her her babies. Mm. And she had that motherly air about her, you know. If you would come to school and she would observe that you get you get ice cream every day. Mm-hmm. And that particular day, 
you would not say you wanted ice cream. She would say, come here, darling. You go to her. She said, now, something is different about you today. He said, I said, good morning. And he said, she said, no, not that. When we had our orders in for lunch, you didn't bring me, you didn't tell me you wanted ice cream and which flavor you wanted. He said, I can't have it today because I don't have any money to buy it today. Mm -hmm. He called himself whispering and the whole class can hear what he was saying. Mm -hmm. And she said, you don't have to have it. She said, you see my purse over there? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, bring it to me. She'd open her purse, take out her change purse, mm -hmm. and tell him to put his little hands in there and get out as much as you need for this ice cream you want to eat today. He said, wow, you're the best, you're the bestest mother in the, bestest mother in the world. And she, she flicked her eyes and she said, bestest mother in the world. And she said that was grounds for research. All this time, that baby has not had a relationship with his mother or father. It was with neighbors, mm -hmm. almost like rearing him. Mm -hmm. If he didn't have any money for ice cream, he didn't need ice cream. I guess he said, if I can't afford it, I don't need it. Mm -hmm. And this that gives her grounds to have a a mother-children conversation. Mm -hmm. And she said, this is audience time, no, conference time. Everybody knew it was conference time. You put down your pencil, paper, anything you were doing, and listen. Because mm -hmm. Mother Dear had something to say. And she would address herself as Mother Dear. And she said, I want you to know, I'm not talking about your Mommy and daddies and grandmamas and grandfathers. I'm talking about anybody else could not love you any more than I love you. You are my babies. And from that day on, she was known as the teacher who called her children her babies. Mm -hmm. Even when her children came to school, her husband would come to pick her up. And the boys would come in the classroom. One, one of them walked in there and didn't say good afternoon. The boy didn't do anything but did not say good afternoon. He didn't He didn't come in there saying the bad words. He didn't come in there running. He just came across the threshold and saw his mommy. He was glad to see and ran to her girl. And the daddy was standing at the door still. When it must have been Leon that that did the running, because she had to always tell him to slow down. He got up, he got his little bear hug and kiss, and then his daddy said, "Get back over there where he was." He had not properly, in his own way, said good afternoon to us, and he said told us, he said, I apologize that we came in here with so much haste and we forgot our manners. I don't want you to ever be in too much of a rush to not use your manners. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, daddy. Mm -hmm. And mother dears look, calling him daddy, you know. I guess they say, I'm on a, we're on a roll. We're going to get us a mama and a daddy at the same time. <laughs> Brother, let me tell you. That lady was one of a million. She would only ask you to do something once. If she would tell you the reason. She has to leave the room to go get a tele answer a telephone. Somebody would have called her at school and if anybody calls you why yet work it has to be important mm -hmm. so she said at the door I want you to continue what you're doing 
I had to go answer the telephone. Now, can mother dear go answer the telephone and know that you're going to do the right thing? Yes, mother dear. Mrs. Bunch went down, closed the door, went down the hall, about from here to the beginning of this complex, mm -hmm. to the office to get the telephone. While she was out, one little guy got up, went to the door and to peek. I don't see her anymore. They got up on their seats. We had these lockers in the room. Mm. You open one door and all of them open. Oh, really? It's like prison. <laughs> oh, I hadn't even thought about that. But they had hooks over each uh, hanger. So when the kids had hats or something, they could put their hats over their coats. Mm. So when it's time to go home, anywhere, they could have all their things with them. Somebody said in the class, we promised, we promised Mother Dear that we were going to do what we were doing when she let, when she was leaving. And we're not doing that. Hazel, bless her heart. I got to check on Hazel. Hazel was the most disrespectful child I've ever known in my life. <laughs> she says, She'll make this comment. She's not my mother <laughs> and not my father. Nobody tells me what to do when I want to do it. And one little guy said, Ernest Royster said, Hazel, why don't you one time try to obey? Why would I obey one time when I haven't had to obey all the other times? Good point. <laughs> and then she, was, she looks around the room and said, we don't have everybody little lot of dog children in here. I had never heard the word lot of dog before. She was talking about me. I know the little lot of dog over there is going to do what <laughs> Mother Dia said. I didn't have any other course but to do what she said. She said, do what you were doing. Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> so, you were quiet, minding your own business. You wasn't in this conversation. But yet she tried to pull you into this conversation? Uh-huh. Because she's, she needs some company, I guess, when Mother Dear came back from the telephone call. She's going to see all this disturbance in there. And she's going to say, I wasn't the only one. <laughs> she did, too. You know, she she needs some company. <laughs> Ernest Horster told her, he said, you can make up that if you want to. Make up that story if you want to. But I'm going to tell her the truth. And you know Mother Dear wants us to always tell the truth. Yeah, always. But this is not one of those days. I'm going to have myself a relaxing moment and go in the closet. She went in the closet. Every day she had some candy or something in the pocket. She proceeded to open it. Oh, uh, okay. That's why. You see, it has nothing to do. She wanted to have some candy at that moment. That they have forget everything else. Her focus was on candy. Was on that. Mm. To do what she wanted to do while she came to school. I guess she said, there'll be a time that I can eat and enjoy this candy. Mm. Hazel was that way in the fourth grade. Hazel was in my class in the fourth, fifth, sixth, when we went to junior high. Hazel was still in that class with me. And I don't know yet how she happened to be in there, but it's supposed to have been random selecting the students to go in, the, in, the, in this particular class. Mm -hmm. Hazel was a mean girl. And I think she used profanity. Mm -hmm. She used the word hell one day. Mm -hmm. And the other children said, oh, you said a bad word. She said, what bad word? The boy said, I can't say it. You can't say this at home. No, my mom and daddy said that is not a word that children should use. I'm so glad I don't live in your house. So we, we, have, to, we have to note that this was in the 50s. Mm -hmm. Right? This was in the 50s. Okay. Because... What <laughs> I said... To myself, 
that girl can get in trouble when she goes home because she's in there saying a bad word. Because mm-hmm. the boy, the boy said it was, she said it was a bad word. Mm-hmm. Milton Royster was trying to defend the rule in the class, and she told him to be quiet because he didn't know what he was talking about. Mm-hmm. But we, we got a point. I'm trying to figure out how. So when you heard, so baby got into your your brain, your your, your vocabulary, and you. you when did you start using it in the classroom? Because now you're just a child. You're not. You didn't go to university yet or anything like that. I must have picked it up mm-hmm. and started using it very, very early. Uh, just in the neighborhood, if the little kids were out there playing with with my brother or sister, and uh, they want, I, I had a snack for them. I call. That's all the babies. Come on. That's what I mean. This is what Mrs. Tolly in South Africa does. You know, he's the same. He's the same thing you, to, to to know that you're so many years apart. He has the same kind of mentality uh, that you have. Uh, uh. So, so, so you started using it then. Not, OK, what encouraged you to keep on using that term? Because it was a nobody challenged you. Nobody said, don't call me. You know, they're not babies or whatever. I never had anyone to challenge it. I had many of them to question it. Where did I find, how did I see so much love in these in these babies, they would say it, in a sarcastic manner, mm. that you continue to use it. Even when I had ninth grade, they told me when I went to the middle school that I was going to have ninth grade kids, and they were basically boys. They were about 16, 17 years old or whatever, yeah. Had a mind of their own mm-hmm. and would do what they wanted on their own. Mm-hmm. The principal told me, You may meet some resistance. May. Mm-hmm. I said, What kind of resistance? He said, You may, they may have an assignment for, for night and to bring it in the next day, signed by a parent. Mm-hmm. And they may, somebody may in that class say, Huh? Now, I ain't bringing nothing back. <laughs> I said, well, first of all, we're going to have to correct the late English right away. I ain't ne- I, I ain't going. I okay. said, they could say, I'm not, I don't want to, or I don't know how to, mm. but I I said, uh, he said, what about that? I said, well, they're not going to say that. He said, who's not going to say that? I said, not to me, the mother. Mm. Said the mother, do you realize I'll be talking about ninth graders? It's the grade that no one wants. And I couldn't understand why they didn't want those those lovely ninth grade boys. Just because they all look like men in there. When they were standing up in the class, brother, it looked like they were the men from the Salvation Army or from the military. They were big. Big boys. Yeah, we're in the South. That means we they grow football players and basketball players down here. But see, the South, they had, they were, a lot of, half of the kids were taking judo. Mm. Another group was doing another kind of sport. But in order there for them to compete, they would have to get a note from the teacher saying they were up to date on their assignments and everything. Behavior had been commendable. All of this had to be sent in to their coaches. Mm -hmm. Now, that's extra work. You don't have to do it. This is this, if you will, please. I said, I would love to tell the teacher how my babies are doing. The coach, yeah. yeah. So, I would get that. I would write the letter. But not only would I write the letter, I'd have them come and sit beside me at the desk or wherever I was and let them read the letter that I'm going to send to their coaches or to somewhere, what I'm saying about them. And at the end, uh, I would always say, is a, it is my pleasure to be working with, and I'll put the person name there and there, and I pray that I am worthy of their love, respect, and something else. So my girlfriend 
Z said, Doe, did you put down there, I love you on the, you know, to the coaching? I said, no, this was a business. She said, oh, you don't say that I love you when it's business. I said, well, I didn't know protocol for that, for co writing coaches, because I had never had to write a coach. I want you to know a letter came back the next day. The other thing is that they wouldn't take a note home. The the kid the, the the children wouldn't take the note home to the parents if they okay. Mm -mm. The teacher would give it to them mm -hmm. or somebody, but they wouldn't. The mothers and fathers then would ever see it. They would say, "Oh, I put it on the refrigerator. Oh, I put it on the ice box mm -hmm. or something like that." And then you wait the next morning for a response because you gonna have that. Your note always carried. I will be able to attend. I will not be able to attend or questionable if I can attend. So, you know, you could anticipate how many parents would be coming up, coming there. The next morning, the principal said to me, how many notes do you think you're going to get back from the parent? I said, all of them. <laughs> he said, you have more confidence in these children than anybody I've ever known, and they are ninth graders. I said, what is about the ninth graders that the folk are talking about it? I said, the only other grade I know that there was a transition grade was the fourth grade. And I had, I had good fourth grade uh, experiences. Well, when the door, the bell rang and they got to the to the door, it didn't come right on in. It just got to the door. The door was already open. If I had a little student assistant, that person would say, good morning. Please come in quietly. They said, good morning. Came in there and put their little stuff on, on the hooks and wherever they needed. And then my teacher assistant will say, now you will prepare yourselves for the morning news. This, this is a nice, just like he was the big time teacher. Mm. And we go through our morning news. We had to always introduce a new word, an expression. The expression was, wow, that's all. Well, let's just go back to this morning news. What, what does that mean? What, what morning was, what, what does that mean? It was, it was a thing that what the month is and the year and the date and the uh, weather. I'm about to, did you get it from the newspaper? I mean, how, did somebody pull out a newspaper? or what, how did No, that? no, this is from their viewing TV or listen to radio. Their report back. Uh -huh. Oh, I understand. I understand. Everybody's sharing because mm. everybody, they had about I think we had about four newspapers that the children could get some news. Mm -hmm. And then if those parents who had afford could could afford a TV, you know, they had some real good news, you know, the live news. And but we, we, I would write... Oh, wait, 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 the TV is not that... There's no more live than the radio. So more people, I'm sure, would listen to the radio. I'm sorry, I'm a radio snob. I have to stand yeah. up the radio, you know. Well, that's what most of them had was the radio. Uh -huh, uh -huh. W-T-A-R... W S A P, W R A P, and some W R A P was by Jack Holmes. Jack Holmes was the t a radio person, and he would always say, "I like this kind of carrying on." <laughs> Somebody told me, "said You're gonna hear this in your news." I like this kind of carrying on. So what you gonna do though? I said I'm gonna write it on the board. With the, if they say that's part of the news, I'm gonna make that newsy. I said if I make it newsy, they won't use it much more because it's it's not funny or anything it's serious. Mm -hmm. Then I said they said what's the word for today? I said wow I don't know what to, I don't know what we should do. Somebody said I don't either. Wow. I guess you'll come up with something soon. Another person said something and said, you know, I like that word. How do you spell wow? 
So we wrote, wrote on the board what wow looks like. So that became a sentence. Wow, we're having a special guest today. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know who is this special guest. They looked at the, our schedule and realized there was music. That mu the music teacher was going to come there. Of which she didn't ever go to any other ninth grade class for music. Because the kids didn't want her, want her, want her in there. Because they had to sit still for a few minutes to find at least use the index to find the uh, the, name, the book the, the name of the song, and they had to talk about the composer. And it, I guess the children said they were sick of all that. Can they just go and learn the song and sing it? Mm. So they would uh, got that down there, and about I guess about half an hour later. Somebody came to the door. The door was still open. Was open. Somebody not so tenderly. They said, "Wow, there she is, the music <laughs> teacher." When Inez came in there, she said, "Do let me ask you a question. What is the word for the day?" I said, "Wow, you know about it, don't you?" She said, "If you came in a classroom." And everybody's saying the same thing, whether they're saying good morning, Mrs. Jones, and they, they just say what the word for the day is. Wouldn't you wonder what, you know, what it means? I said, well, they must, they said that because they were excited that you're coming today. She said, is there another ninth grade <laughs> on this hall? I said, yes, right down the corner. She said, you, is that uh, uh, Corinne's class? I said, yes, yeah. she said. Oh, I'm going down there, but I don't expect any wows when I walk in there. They're going to say, oh, no, that kind of thing. <laughs> you know those babies? My babies. Uh, let her, let us finish the reading the, uh, the news from the board. And then my teacher assistant would say, would you please clear your desk for if we have to use instruments? Everybody took the little stuff off the desk, put it inside the little cubby holes on the, which they were seated. And I then said, is it all right to, for me to inter, you know, interrupt these maestros in here? I said, you have my, you have my permission. And then she was tell the children, ask them, did they have a special, you know, favorite composer? I like this one. I like this one. I, li I like this one. Some didn't say what they liked. They started singing it. She would let them go through that whole ex expression. And then she said, somebody said, you didn't ask, you didn't ask Mother Bagby. What's hers? Mm -hmm. Inez turned to me. She said, Mother Bagby. No, Mrs. Bagby. What is your favorite composer? All the kids holler, Bach. She likes John Sosbaski and Bach. Mm -hmm. She said, do I hear sarcasm, sarcasm in your answer? One little girl said, no, ma'am. We know that would be disrespectful. I said, let the record show. You have said what I was going to say. From then on, the principal told me she didn't know that ninth graders had any idea, appreciation for the classics mm. until I came around there. I said, well, it's pretty. She said, you know, it really is pretty mm. and it's soothing. Mm -hmm. I thought, okay. So if it's soothing, she says, it's worthy for me to start listening. She mm. said, well, could I come in there and borrow some of your records, please? Mm. I said, of course. I said, you know where my music area is in the room? And she said, one day they had me chicken pox going around, mm. and they had so many teachers who, had, who couldn't come to work. Mm. 
mm. because they they were had the virus and they had to try to get substitutes. That particular week, I was going to a high school for a conference, math and something conference. Couldn't find enough substitutes. So the principal said, I'll take her class. They said, Libby's going to take it. In Mrs. Crowder's first name was Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. And so very folks will call her Libby. Libby gonna take your class. I said, yes. Who's gonna take that ninth grade class? I said, Libby. She's gonna take all my classes. She can't leave out my babies. She said, oh Lord, that miss. Libby may retire after she be with your your ninth graders. I, I said, these kids, these teachers had a, a stigma about ninth graders. Some of them had, had not ever taught a ninth grader. But it's from what the other teachers were saying, you know. Mm. Is, isn't that what life is? Isn't that what happens in real life? You, know, you, know, you take the third hand report rather than see anything from yourself. No? But see, I would not allow them. If I would go to the lounge and go to the bathroom or something, if they would be talking about something, my ninth grade, about the ninth grade children, they say, isn't that right? And they see who I am. They say, don't ask her. You know, she's going to say, my babies are fine. And she said, there's the only fine children in the whole school or the, her, her ninth grade babies. I said, not only that, my seventh grade babies are sweet too. And, <laughs> and my, they said, what about your eighth grade babies? I said, we have, a, I have an open door policy. They said, I know it. You're welcome to come at any time any time to be in our class but don't be surprised if my babies don't ask you would you look at what they're doing you mean to tell me if I come to visit your class to visit you mm. I got to visit the children I said we're family up there mm. Mm. Fran mm. Lumpkin told me though the day that you were giving, you, uh, giving her a ride to school and she looked at my schedule, and that's, she was the one that told me it would be probably the last time I referred to ch her children as babies. And I said, we'll see. And I just let it go over my head. But she was trying to prepare me for what she had experienced. What they had experienced down there with the with the ninth graders, so basically they were saying that basically some sixteen year old or whatever was not going to accept you calling them babies. What what was the issue? No, no, they just did what was going to obey. Oh, they, okay. They had an attitude of that. Nobody tells me what to do. Okay, so what so what happened? Did you prove them wrong or right or what? They just came to me and told me, "What did you promise these children? You know your babies." If they did not show disrespect mm -hmm. to you, I said, not only me, they better not show respect to anyone. I said, behavior and manners does not begin and end at the same spot. It continues. And especially if it's something that's positive. But don't you ever get mad with them? I said, I get, I become unhappy sometimes. If they tell me one of their sad stories, because they were, <laughs> if their mother wasn't feeling well the night before or that night, they come in the next day and tell me, Mother Bagby, what have you ever had a pain in your arm? I said, Yes. Have you ever had a pain in your leg? I said, Yes. What did you do, Mother, to make it go away? What do I do to make it go away? I said, well, first of all, I try to do is see if I'm outside playing or something, been outside, if it's a mosquito bite. I said, if you have a mosquito bite, you'll swell in that eye if they bite. Or if it's a bee, it will sting. It may be the stinger in there. 
And by the time I finish telling them all the kind of things, if I'm outside and I get a, a an insect bite, they say, can you write that down for me, please? I said, yes. And I'm right now that what I do, they take that home and they would tell the parents, Mother Bagby said, the next time you had trouble with your arm or your leg, do this. <laughs> the mother said, that's what I was doing. No, you weren't doing that because Mother Bagby said, what you take it, you take it and you get a piece of cotton and you put it that on that and rub it on it. You can't rub, can't rub it hard. You have to do it like you're doing for a baby. And she said, and what else does Mother Bagby say you do? Say you can hum a tune if you like. Mm. I said, my gracious, Mr. Henderson, now, Slaughter, the principal, came in there one day and said, I heard you tell the boys when he went out if they're going to have play football, do touch football, not tackle. Because I don't want them to get the closed soil from the green, from the grass. And you said, do you understand? And he said, I heard this mountain of voices say, yes, ma'am. He said, and now back they have a look on their face like they're sorry. One little boy said, "We, excuse me, Mr. Henderson, no, Mr. Slaughter, I'm sorry because I am the one that should have reminded us not to do tackle football. He said, what kind of, were you, were you able to do, were you supposed to? One little boy said, we must be doing do touch. See, Mr. Sanders, Mr. Slaughter, what you do is when you have touch football, you're running and you touch the person, and that's just like you've tackled them, knocked them on the ground or something. He said, Oh, that's what tackle football is. Yes, sir. He said, Well, right now we have we have an we have an audience with Mother Bagley. He said, Well, may I stay? The little girl said, yes, sir, would you be more comfortable sitting in one of those chairs or one of these chairs? He said, anywhere is all right with me. I'm not going to be here long. That was all right with me, too. Do you not know this boy who told what they had done was, uh, they, as they say in the court, they, they had a bailiff to tell him to come forth. He came up there and stood beside me. When he stood beside me, it was just like you were standing over J, a QJ. Mm. That's how big and tall that guy was. Mm. He apologized and said, um, Mother Bagby, I'd like to ask your forgiveness for what we didn't do as you asked us to do. And no one had the Somebody said, intellect. Hmm. I said, this man he is on, on, on at the judge's bench. Hmm. Let <laughs> him say what he wants to say. <laughs> and he said, do not have the intellect to ask you why? Hmm. I said, I wish you had asked that. I said, we could have canceled this court hearing if, <laughs> if somebody... <laughs> This, this classroom court hearing, okay, yeah. Uh-huh. And I looked over there at the principal. Mr. Slaughter was, like I said, I don't believe this. I do not believe this. These are ninth grade boys. Basically, they were, it was a class, I had a class of about 20, one, 21 or 22. And I think we may, I may have had two, three girls in that whole group. Now, this this was in what the the seventies? What the, what was this? The, this uh, uh, no, no, was earlier than that. Oh, in the sixties. Okay, now I just want to get the frame reference because you know things change all the time. Each, yes. dec each, each decade, the children get a things little. Things were changing rapidly. Mm. But then I said, he said, turned to me and he said, 
Mama looked up there at me because I had it. I was standing on my my desk chair because that's how tall I had to try to get tall as he as he. He said, can you, do you have it in your heart to give, forgive us and give us another chance to do what we were supposed to do? I said, well, I have to say how many persons in here would want me to make a decision like that. All the little hands went like this. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it said I don't want to do it fast because I was guilty out there doing the wrong thing. The principal looked at me. And he looked at the children. He said, while they were trying to decide what we're going to do, going to do, he came over to the, where I was in my chair standing still. Do you do this often? I said, no. I don't have to do it often because generally they do what I ask of them to do. But do you have to explain no, do you explain? I said, I think it's worthy. I don't want to make any assumptions that they understand what I'm thinking and feeling. I want to be honest and tell them. He said, you said that they would not talk back to you and everything. He said, I did not believe it. Because you know the reputation. And somebody said, quiet in the room. That meant Mr. Pr the principal had to stop talking too because there was noise in that room. I said, you forgot the word. Please. Please would everybody refrain from talking and wait until mother is ready to go back into court action. <laughs> the principal, Mr. Slaughter said to me, you know, I usually go play golf sometimes when I got a long, long, long lunch period. He said, you think I would have missed this? There's not a golf course in the world. Would be better than this case. We have, the case we have it right now here. He said, Joe, I'm so glad you're here with the family. I said, I'm glad to be here, too. This is your first experience working with the older children. I said, yes, but it probably won't be the last. He said, if I have anything to do with it, it will not be the last. I said, thank <laughs> you, Jake Slaughter. <laughs> there you go.